I don't know if you've noticed, but at some point they started putting charcoal in everything. And so now it's really easy to find toothpaste and mouthwash with charcoal in it, but they also figured out how to put it in toothbrushes and floss. And of course there's the charcoal whitening powder you see a lot on the internet. And fans of this stuff will tell you that charcoal has been a natural way to clean your teeth ever since ancient Rome. And skeptics will say that this is not just a fad, but maybe dangerous. So let's get to the bottom of this. Should you be using a charcoal product? What are the benefits and what are the risks? Now let me first say that this is a tricky thing to talk about just because there is not as much science on this as I'd like. So I'm gonna do my best to fill in the gaps in the research with my best educated guess as to how plausible some of this stuff is. Just know that I could be wrong. I mean, like I always could be wrong, but just more so in this case. So after reading some packaging and some websites, it seems to me the most common claims made by these products are that they detoxify, they neutralize acids, kill bacteria, eliminate bad breath, and of course, whiten your teeth. Let's start with the detoxifying. See, activated charcoal is pretty interesting stuff. It's microscopically really porous, which means that just a little bit of it has a lot of surface area. And that makes it good at binding to things in your body, like molecules and ions. And for that reason, it's been used in cases of poisonings and overdoses, where after an event like that, you can be given charcoal, the poison or whatever you overdosed on will attach itself to the charcoal and then pass through you, rather than being absorbed into the body where it's gonna cause problems. Now that basic idea has been expanded upon and people have said, you know, maybe if I use charcoal on a regular basis, it'll bind to other various toxins in my body and I'll just be overall healthier. So that's where these detoxifying claims are coming from. What do I think about them? Well, it's not necessarily that I think that they're wrong. I mean, there could be something to that, but the way they are right now, they're so vague that they're kind of hard to evaluate scientifically. Like rather than talking about toxins in general, I kind of want to know what specific toxin we're talking about. I mean, is it related to the cavity process or the gum disease process or something else entirely? Like what is the specific bad thing that I'm trying to prevent by using a charcoal product? And then how good is charcoal at actually preventing that bad thing? Like those are the questions I'd like answers to before I recommend something. But at this point, there's just a lot of scientific legwork that needs to be done before we get to that point. Neutralizing acids. Now, activated charcoal is a base, and so it is gonna neutralize acids. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna have any benefits beyond that. I mean, like acids do bad things in the mouth. They are involved in the cavity process, they can erode your teeth. So you would think that something that eliminates acids is also gonna help prevent those things. But we could look at something like baking soda. Baking soda is also a base. It's also good at neutralizing acids. But studies show that brushing with baking soda does not necessarily help prevent uh, acid erosion or cavities. My guess is that it's gonna be the same thing with activated charcoal, but we'll see. Kills bacteria. Now, it does seem plausible that the charcoal is gonna have some negative effect on the bacteria in your mouth, whether it's actually killing the bacteria or whether it's just binding to it and carrying it away. But whether charcoal is gonna be as good at getting rid of bacteria, say the stannous fluoride in some toothpaste or the essential oils in Listerine, that I don't know. I will say this, it takes a pretty big antibacterial effect in the lab to actually make a difference in your mouth when, with the things that you actually care about, like uh, preventing gum disease or gingivitis. I'm skeptical we're gonna see an effect that big with activated charcoal, but we'll see. Eliminates bad breath. Now this seems fairly plausible to me. Activated charcoal is good at binding to smelly, volatile compounds. I mean, that's like why we use it in things like air filters and water filters. But and to whatever extent that uh, the charcoal is also gonna be disrupting the bacteria in your mouth, that's also gonna be helpful. I would be concerned that the effect could be short-lived, and of course, whether the effect is gonna be big enough for you and your significant other to notice, that I don't know. Uh, I'd say we can wait for more research, but honestly don't see a lot of studies on bad breath. So whitening. And for this, I'll say yes and no. See, activated charcoal is abrasive. And so for that reason, it's likely to work in the same way like a whitening toothpaste is gonna work. It's gonna be good at scrubbing stain from the outside of your teeth, which can sometimes make them look a little whiter. There's no evidence, however, that uh, charcoal or whitening toothpaste for that matter is gonna do anything to lighten the base shade of your teeth, which is what I think people mean when they say they want whiter teeth. I do kind of have this pet theory that Maybe the charcoal could be temporarily making your gums a little darker, which could make your teeth seem a little brighter by contrast, but take that with a grain of salt. So those are the potential benefits of charcoal, but uh, what about the risks? Now, the first potential risk is related to that detoxifying effect I mentioned earlier. See, activated charcoal is good at binding to things, but it's not like a heat-seeking missile that's just gonna go after the bad stuff. 
it's gonna bind to just about anything, and that includes the nutrients in your food, your vitamins, prescription medications, you know, like the stuff that you wanna be absorbed into your body. So that's always something you need to be thinking about when you're using a charcoal product. As a dentist, I'm a little concerned that it could bind to the fluoride in your toothpaste. See, charcoal has some affinity for fluoride, and while it's not gonna be able to bind to all the fluoride in your toothpaste, it might be able to bind to enough of it to make it not as good at preventing cavities. To what extent this is something you actually need to worry about, I actually don't know, but I think it's at least plausible enough to mention here. Now, the other big risk of using a charcoal product is something I mentioned earlier, which is its abrasiveness. Now, when I talk to other people in the dental community, this is the big thing that I hear about, with a lot of dental professionals concerned that uh, charcoal is just too abrasive and could be damaging teeth. But on this point, I actually think that the dental community might be worrying too much. See, we measure abrasiveness by something called RDA, or relative dentin abrasion. And anything with an RDA value less than 200, we typically consider safe, with whitening toothpaste being on the upper end of that safe range. Most of these charcoal products at least claim to have RDA values within those safe limits. And while I may not trust that when it comes to a shady internet whitening powder, I do trust it when it comes from uh, Colgate, Tom's, or Hello. So there are uh, safe products out there that have safe levels of abrasiveness, or at least levels that aren't any worse than uh, some whitening toothpaste out there. Now to wrap all this up, I'm not sure that there's any good reason for you to be using a, a charcoal product. But at the same time, I'm not sure there's any clear evidence of harm either. Now I've said I don't know a lot in this video, and you might be the type of person that hears that and says, you know, maybe these benefits are better than I think they are, and this is worth giving a try. I think that's fair, but I will say that the dental community is likely to come to the opposite conclusion, where we say, you know, we should really get a handle on what these risks are and make sure the benefits are worth them before we recommend that people use this stuff. My personal recommendation would be just to not bother with any of this stuff, but if you really wanted to use a charcoal something, I think the mouthwash is probably your safest bet. Just don't use it right before or after you brush your teeth. If you really want to use a charcoal toothpaste, I'd say get one with fluoride in it from a company that you trust, and I would recommend using it in addition to a regular fluoride toothpaste. So maybe use your normal toothpaste in the morning and then the charcoal one at night, something like that. The toothbrushes and floss with charcoal embedded in them, these just seem like all around bad ideas to me. The charcoal whitening powders, I would say save your money. There are better options out there if you want to whiten your teeth. Options that the ancient Romans didn't know anything about.